Good evening and welcome to this session of the uh, live learning classes conducted by the Board of Studies of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. So it's nice to have you all here and today being a Sunday, some of you have come. I'm very happy to see. So since a few of you only are here, let me greet you. We have Ms. Nagma and uh, we have uh, Deepshray. We have uh, Sushankaran Vanakam, sir. And uh, Surendran Gunjan, welcome. Afreen, welcome. Others, as they make entries, I greet them now. Let's see. Uh, there's a small problem with my display. So there's a little bit of a jump there. That's nothing to do with the video or the connectivity. It's just my display, which is yet to be corrected. So the technician says it will take two days since they don't have that time of type of time now. I'm just putting up with this. So let's hope. You know, um, Ajay Chauhan, how it's possible because today's holiday, I don't know, for you maybe it's a holiday, sir, for me no holiday, 24 by 7, I work 24 by 7, seriously, today we are working, my office is working, as you know, this is October 31st, the due date for filing the IT returns and audits and the interim audits are going on, so around October we work continuously, but personally I work 24 by 7, there's no time when I do not work, okay. Chalo, no problem. Good. I'm happy to be here and I'm, I'm happy, thankful to all of you in your valuable Sunday evening for learning. And that too, a boring subject like incorporation of company. Let us again invoke the blessings of the supreme being, the ultimate supreme being. Okay. Call it what you will, the supreme being and invoke the blessing of that being to this learning event. Sahana Bhavato. Sahanao Bhunakto, Sahavir Yankar Vavahai, Tejasvina Vadhita Mastu, Mavit Vishavahai, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Great. In fact, you can understand the meaning of what I chanted. It is not any, is any particular God or religion. This is a chant which unites the teacher and the taught. And it, it accepts that there could be issues. So it says, let us come together in happiness. It, let us come together in some kind of an harmonious manner and let the learning be effective. And because of that learning, Tejasvina Vadhita Mastu. Let the, let the brightness of both of us increase. It's a, it's a chant chanted by both the teacher and the student. It is not just the teacher who has to chant. If in, in many of our discourses and lectures where I go as a student, the, the teacher will chant along with the students. And so it, the, it both of us. And finally, let there be no disturbances or controversy between us. That's what it means. So uh, it's a fantastic thing. And then we say Shanti. You might have noticed me beginning with a high octave Shanti, then medium, then low. So the idea is there are many, many things. See, it could be natural disturbance. Okay. So we say acts of God in law. We're going to, we're going to, maybe this word act of God will come regularly in some of your contract act and all that. Acts of God are always accepted because nobody can predict an act of God. So act of God is there. Then we have Bhuta. That is the, 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 the there could be a, you know, uh, some disturbance in the pool, in this room by other people, etc., etc. And human disturbances also could happen. Finally, inner, our own mind is confusing us. Our own mind is making us, you know, irritated. Um, so, you know, it says, hey, why listen to this, uh, Sri Kantya? Yeah. Boring subject, yeah, law. This fellow is also not talking in Hindi. He's continuously talking in English, feeling so irritated, man. This is inner disturbance. So that also... We are going to get into another nice topic, which is um, your um, um, companies, you know, not-for-profit companies. Hmm? But before I do that, I, sh I need to just share with you certain exemptions which are available for OPCs. And uh, thank you, Swatiji. And Keshavji, welcome. Nice to see you after a lot of time. Okay. 
So nice to see you after, or rather nice to see your uh, name here after a lot of time. So one person company is a special category of company. Purpose of this one person company is to make it easy for an individual to get uh, the benefit of corporate identity, meaning it is meant to help an individual to form a company so that they can enjoy, he can enjoy or she can enjoy limited liability. So they don't want to make it very difficult for OPC. So they give some exemption, meaning certain relaxation. Okay. So uh, like MAF, they are saying this is excused for you. No need like that. So what is that? OPC is not required to prepare a cash flow statement. Later on, when we talk about accounts of company, you will find the financial statement definition includes cash flow also. And you are, I'm sure some of you are quite familiar with the format of the cash flow statement, etc. Counting standard 3, etc., etc. So that being the case, an OPC need not prepare the cash flow statement. Other types of companies compulsorily have to prepare cash flow. Similarly, later on, when we come to management and administration topic, you will find under section 92, every company should file annual return. This annual return should be signed by two directors and the company secretary. Okay. So, whereas here, an OPC may not have two directors. It may not have company secretary. It may have only one director. It can. It can have only one director. In which case, minimum one director. Hmm? If it has only one director, then that one director can sign. It can be signed by the director and not necessarily a company secretary. Similarly, section 134, when you come to financial statement, financial account of company, accounts of company, I hopefully we will discuss it. I will take it or some other faculty will teach you about financial statements and also board of directors report. See every year for every company, the directors, board of directors have to prepare a board report. Also, the audited financial statement has to be filed. Just like the annual return under section 134, the financial statements have to be filed. For OPC, here again, it is enough if one director signs the audited financial statement. Also, for annual return and board of directors report, the MCA is proposing, not yet done, proposing to bring abridged form for one person company. Abridged means small. Abridged means made small. Abridged means made small. Don't confuse with bridge. Bridge alaga. This is abridged means big made small. Um, there is a book called Anna Karenina, which I am now reading. It has 800 pages. Now 800 pages person may not want to read. So we abridge Anna Karenina into 150 pages, 200 pages. Just the story is given. Just the essence is given. Without the Leo Tolstoy's descriptions and language, you know, we don't have. Just the story is given. That is called abridged version. Okay. Abridged means make small, make it less. So an abridged form means smaller form for OPC. If you have a notebook or pencil, uh, Any issues? At that time, it was okay, now. No, sir, now the connectivity is good from my end. Problem? Okay. Sorry, there appeared to be a small issue, but now corrected, hopefully. Moving on, coming back to the point, 92 or 134 important Hekyo because they are important because everywhere you will find company can enjoy exemption. Company, including private company, OPC or government company, Section 8 company, any exemption 
given to any company can be enjoyed only if that company has furnished annual return under 92 and financial statement under 134 within the due dates. Every year, there should be no default failure in doing this. So, this is very, very important. Means 92 and 134, if you remember, it will be good. Okay. So, now I hope the voice breaking is not there. Inshallah, let us hope things will go on properly. <laughs> See, whenever I explain the meaning of Sahana Bhavatu, no, something will happen. <laughs> Maybe that is that is God's way of joking with me. Huh? Srikanth, you are explaining. Huh? See what I am doing like that. Anyway, no problem. Is the voice now better? Is the voice now better? Yeah. Now I think the voice is better. Let us check up. Maybe. Hmm? Just wait. Sir, aap kon se page se pada rahe ho? Harshad Kumar Thakur, close your board of studies material. Stop reading from the material and listening to me. Okay, do kaan hai na? Or sunye. Sir, sunye. Okay, and you have got do aank hai na? Look at your screen where my PowerPoint is coming. Later on, using my PowerPoint, you do comparative study, comparative research. Sri Kant PowerPoint, board of studies material. Where, where, where you do? Now don't Confuse yourself. Just listen to me. Okay? And look at the screen. Whatever is going there, let it go. Baba, I am not taking something out of the Board of Studies material. It is very much there. And I will be covering it. Huh? Don't worry. Don't do this comparative study during the class. No. Have a notebook and a pen. Make notes. Whatever I am saying, when I say important, make notes. Okay. Takurji, you believe me, that will make you more aware and knowledgeable of company law than keeping the board of studies material open, listening to me, half not listening to me, half looking at the board of studies material, searching where it is. Why? No need. Huh? Just listen to me. Okay? Believe me. Trust your teacher. Later on, board of studies material is always there with you. In Sit, here, sit comfortably. My notes will be coming, uploaded notes. Uh, maybe on Friday you will, uh, no, yeah, Thursday. Friday you will get it. Friday, you sit and do this research, comparative research. Do it. Aaj hmm? no. Okay, sir? Keshavji? Yeah. Now, all of you are confirming that my voice is better. Continuing with the exemptions. See, when you come to management and administration, we will talk about procedure for general meetings and extraordinary general meetings. Many things we will talk about it. We will, we will talk about... Uh, um, um, proxy, quorum, notice. Many of these provisions are either not applicable to one person company or applicable in a different way. How it is different? Don't worry now. When you come to management and administration, we will teach you. We will tell you how they are different. Okay? Now, also, there is a relaxation with respect to. Somewhere if you find this abbreviation WRT, you, you can simply read it as with respect to. Similarly, W dot E dot F, e, F dot. You can say with the effect from, with effect from. These are all abbreviations. So there is relaxations with respect to convening of board meetings. An OPC is required to hold only one meeting of the board of directors in each half of your calendar year. Calendar year begins on 1st January, ends on 31st December. Half a year will begin on 1st January, end on 30th September, no, 30th June. Okay, January, February, March, April, May, June. So, 1, 1 to 36, there should be one meeting. Again, 1, 7 to 31, 12, there should be one. Only two meetings and that two, one in each half year. There is one more condition of 120 days in between. No need about it. But the point is, it is required to hold only one meeting. Whereas normal company should hold meeting four times. Okay, four times. Whereas OPC only once. This section which deals with board meeting is not in your syllabus. But still, if in case they exam, they ask you, what are the exemptions to an OPC? This is one of the exemptions. 
Under Section 137, OPCs are allowed to file financial statements within six months. Normally, normally financial statements 137 should be filed within 30 days by all other companies. But OPC alone is given six months. All these exemptions at the appropriate time we will again discuss. But now what Institute has done in the Board of Studies material, they have given it in one place. Single space, single place they have given everything. Okay. Ayyo. Pushi <laughs> Sahu. This Hindi matter we have already taken. If your English is not as good as mine, I am trying to make my English as simple as yours. I am taking extraordinary effort to reduce my English to your level. Okay, kindly understand the effort I am taking to make English knowledge easier to you. Huh. So, respect that effort on my part to speak slowly, to speak simple English so that Pushi Sahu can understand. Okay, I am coming from a state called Tamil Nadu. Right from my birth, I never studied Hindi in school. I studied Tamil, my mother tongue, and Samskritam, Sanskrit, okay, which is also my Matra Bhasha. So, I never studied Hindi. Therefore, how I will speak in Hindi, you tell me, madam. Can you speak in Tamil, Sahuji? I'm sure since you are Sahu, I'm presuming that you are from Odisha. Huh? Can I speak in Odisha? Can you speak? I am assuming you are Odia. You may not be, because generally Sahus, I've found them coming from Odisha. So, I'm sure you are Odia. Come on, let us speak in English. You are an Odian. Hopefully, I'm assuming. Okay, I'm a Tamilian. Let us not bother about Hindi. Let us speak in English. Okay, and let us enjoy Odia and let us let me enjoy Tamil. What do you say? Hmm? I have a lot of Odia friends with whom I speak in English. Okay, so you have to understand. Already one big fight got over with Devendra Singh. Again, we cannot start that. Please. With folded arms, this teacher is begging all the students who cannot understand English to kindly bear with me. Okay? Only for you, I cannot speak in Hindi. Then all my Malayalam students, my Kerala friends will want Malayalam. All my Telugu friends will want Telugu. All my <laughs> Kashmiri friends will want Urdu. Huh? I cannot speak like that. I am not Kamala Hassan that I can speak uh, so many. Okay, you are from UP because generally Sahus, I found them come from Udia. Wherever you are coming from, ma. Try to pick up English also. Hmm? Also, what do you say? You, UP, Kumauni is there. In, in Uttarakhand may have Kumani. Kumauni is there. Huh? Garwali is there. So many beautiful dialects are there. You know, When we all try to speak only one common Hindi, our own Kumauni and Bhojpuri and Garwali are going. Udiya is going. Bengali is going. Okay, everything is going. No, we should preserve our mother tongue. The only way to do that is to read our mother tongue, speak our mother tongue. How to speak our mother tongue, read our mother tongue? If only we can speak in English, all of us can speak in English and our mother tongue will live. Okay? This is a broader thought. Think about it. If my mom, if your mother tongue is Hindi, what to do? Even there, Avadi is there. You know, the, 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 the pure Hindi, you know, spoken in UP in parts of Lucknow, Allahabad, there is no Prayagraj. That is the purest Hindi. Even that is dying. Okay. So we should not allow these languages to die. Chalo. Now, thank you for accepting that Sanskrit is our Matri Bhasha. Okay. Okay. Now, now we come to topic. So this is it. End of end of language issue. Sri Kant will speak only in English, but he will speak Asan English, simple English. He will try his best. Same way. Students from certain parts of India who cannot speak English will listen to him carefully and learn English and will improve their English. It's a great opportunity now for you. Later on, when you finish your final, you will, or now maybe after you finish your inter, you will come for advanced MCS. 15 days of torture, advanced MCS. I am one of the faculty in Southern region. So, so, there when they come now, that 15 days again and again, these poor children will be told, uh, learn English, learn English, learn English. When they will learn, how they will learn. All along, they have learned only Hindi, Hindi, Hindi. 
no english teacher also obliging speaking in hindi when this child will learn english never then when this child comes to uh, uh, advanced senses we keep beating it and saying hey speak in english english se baat karo english se baat karo how he will speak only if he speaks now he will speak then later on when this gentleman becomes ca or lady becomes ca member they go to a big company there that uh, hr fellow is telling a communication skill lacking lacking communication skill and kyo uh, english nahi so if you in the larger in your own personal growth interest in your own interest not for any patriotic all no don't bring patriotism and all into this you want to grow as an individual learn english because you may go abroad baba you may get a chance to go to scotland england there you will go and tell all those people to speak in hindi ah okay good neha harge good job thank you shruti going on now hey this topic is very very important from exam point of view but um uh, um a little boring i will run through it if you have a doubt now one question is uh, there surendran has asked which i didn't miss i saw can opc convert itself into section 8 company can opc convert to section 8 no 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 okay we i'll show you here procedure for conversion of opc into a private or public company other than company registered under section 8 so rule 6 is very clear you cannot convert opc into section 8 you cannot convert section 8 into opc okay yeah section 8 company cannot be converted into opc it's a very good question surendran ji and i am very happy okay yeah against other company means other companies have to comply with this opc exempt opc need not chalo now section 8 company is called not for profit company okay um, that is if you want to form some charitable organization there are in india there are three methods of doing it if you want to form a charitable organization in india there are three methods of doing it three methods what are they one you can form under the trust act there is something called the indian trust act where you can form a trust right or you can form a society under the local say in every state there is a societies registration act which is governed by the state law right but society registered under one state will be bound only in that state trust of course can go everywhere but it has certain limitations if you want pan indian operation if you want to have branches all over india then it will be better for you to form a section 8 company under the companies act that way you can have pan india across india sub india everywhere you can have your branches so when a large ngo hmm, will try to form as a company also many clubs you know like and uh, like that they form as social clubs etc they form as section 8 company that way they can have elected office bearers rules and regulations etc hmm? now so basically it is proposed that a person or an association of persons proposed to be registered under this act as a limited company okay as a limited company why they use the word person god only knows because it gives the wrong impression that one individual or opc can become section 8 company no okay there is a strict prohibition as mr surendra asked and i have given my reply there is a strict prohibition that it is not possible hmm? now um section 8 company only association of person meaning more than two two or more only can become thing either it can be a private company or a public company okay so they want to register for that purpose they are they are having these objects only these objects commerce art science sports education research 
social welfare charity see pure charity can be done religion also possible you can have section 8 company for religious purpose also see you can form your trust for religious purpose you can have a society for religious purpose the the issue will happen when you go for atg there they won't give you atg that is donation to that trust or body cannot enjoy exemption under the income tax act if it is purely for religious purpose okay but if you are only 5% is for religious no problem but beyond 5% if you are going to use for religious performing religious activities then the exemption will be there under the income tax act but the donation when they are giving na that won't get exemption you can form a section 8 company for religious purpose protection of environment like that anything which has social activity please note business is not there so section 8 company cannot engage directly in doing business okay but of course you see suppose you are going to have an art promotion you could have see uh, for example in andheri in mumbai there is a association the mouth and uh, foot painting artists mouth and foot painting artists see this was painted by a person who has no hand or leg with the mouth can you imagine okay now obviously these people they may sell what they make okay but that is allowed but the purpose should be to promote art or to promote social welfare okay now so this intends to apply its profits if any there can be profit see i may collect money as donation i may collect money from sale of my the products man, manufactured by my people and that income can be used to, that surplus beyond the expenses you know it's called profit we can also better use the word surplus in my humble view the word surplus is also correct that is whatever we have taken as donation income etc minus whatever expense hai balance you see and any interest dividend rent that we are getting will be applied will be used only in the promotion of the objects of the company meaning commerce art etc also intends to prohibit payment of dividend to its members so section 8 company cannot pay dividend to its members if these three conditions are acceptable to that company then roc will grant a license license means permission see suppose i have a i have a car i get a license to drive permission to drive are you able to understand it is a permission to drive on the roads of india i have a li license which is applicable to india if i go abroad i can't because i don't have a license permission freedom to do so license means permission if i have a dog i have to get a license to keep the dog am i correct that like that license so they get the permission to register themselves as a company under the company act 2013 so first you have to go to the roc and satisfy the roc that you are having these three things that these objects are only there you will only use the profit for the activities you will not pay dividend if these three are satisfied then roc will give you license after granting that license you have to apply to the registrar for registration of a company got it how you will apply later on we'll be seeing that uh, forms for uh, company registration right now we will just take it the same form for normal company ka registration na it is called spice plus oh, i think we have seen that right we have already seen that right am i correct ah huh, we have already seen na so you are familiar with spice plus yeah yeah so you know that spice plus i already told you na Uh, the form same form you have to apply see today spice plus incorporation form number 32 is a vibrant and totally active state uh, form right now we, the mca has released what is known as b3 b means version version 3 this version 3 is powerful 
but it is also giving a lot of problem. Company secretary literally weeping every day for information. I am also a teacher for the company secretaries. For the local SARC faculty, I am one of the oldest faculty. More than 30 years I have been teaching at the Institute of Company Secretaries. Okay, Almost 30 years I have been teaching there. Okay, Now, almost from 1992 I have been teaching. Okay, So, the point is the this um, the Spice Plus new form is very good. See, you go there, you select, uh, automatically the form will provide the correct uh, forms. That is, if you say, if you say table B, automatically that table will come. Everything will be done automatically. It is very good. But as usual, it is having teething problem. That Spice Plus form is divided into two parts, part A and part B. Part A is for name, reserving the name. Part B is incorporation. So you first do A, get the name reserved, then within 20 days, you have to incorporate the company. We'll see that a little later. So two, two parts. Okay. So the same Spice Plus INC32 will be used for incorporating Section 8 also. Okay. Now, along with that Spice Ka form, you have to upload, you have to attach the memorandum and articles of association. Right, sir? Now, let us be careful. When we studied uh, incorporation of normal company for memorandum and articles, we saw EMOA and EAOA. Yaad hai na? You remember na? EMOA. What is the form number? Anybody? What is the form number for EMOA? I, I taught you in the last class. What is the form number for EMOA, EAOA? You can give me form number, just number alone. MOA, AOA. Form number alone you give. Whatever number. Hindu Arabic number. Two numbers. Number ek, comma number though. That is not one, two. Some other number. Anybody? Okay. Some sir, then tell. Please answer and proceed. Gunjan is asking what is the meaning of commerce? Madam, there are two things. Promoting commerce, Ranjan ji, Sunia ji, promoting commerce versus engaging in commerce. Okay, means promoting trade versus doing trading. So, when you do trading, it is business. But when you promote a trade, you are what is known as chamber of commerce. Have you heard of chamber of commerce? Similarly, you have uh, industries development associations are there. For example, we have in Coimbatore, we have Coimbatore, Indust uh, Coimbatore District um, Small Industries Development or something, Association. Yes, sir, sir. Kodesia. Uh, Coimbatore District Industrial Development Association. Kodesia. I forget the expansion. Okay. We have in every district we have. And Kodesia is very famous. So, no, Kodesia is an association of companies who are engaged in business. So, the purpose of Kodesia is to promote commerce. So they want to develop the industries in Coimbatore district. So that that organization can be section eight. I I don't. It is Odisha is not section eight, but so like those organizations can be registered under section eight. They are meant for promoting uh, commerce, but not engaging in commerce. Able to understand, uh, Gunjanji? You got it? Yes. Now. Um, difference between license and register. See, license is permission. I will put it in a very different way. Some marriages, you know, Hindu marriage, you don't need a license. But for certain other marriages, special marriages, you need a license. First, you have to get the license. Once you get the license, then you have to get married. Understand? Getting license is only getting permission to get married. The actual marriage is there. Na? That is incorporation. Are you able to understand? So, uh, when the license is given, the registrar is telling, I am permitting this organization, association to be, I am permitting to be registered as a company. Once the permission is given, then with that permission, you have to apply in form Spice Plus for incorporation. Wow, all of you are very, very thorough. You know, I am expecting uh, some questions in MCQ types with forms where they might give you the nature of the form and ask you options. So my humble request, 
make list of forms and be thorough. Like uh, IAS exam, you study them, <laughs> muck up the form numbers and the uh, purpose of the form. So EMOA, EAOA, 33, that, you, that one muck up activity, you do it once. Hmm? All of you are 100% thorough, 33 or 34. EMOA, 33, EAOA, 34. For other companies, but for Section 8 company, please note it. M memorandum is in 13, 1, 3. And uh, article is INC 31. Please note the difference, my dear friends. For Section 8 company alone, memorandum is 1, 3. And uh, articles is 3, 1. Okay. So, okay. So, that is one thing. Um, uh, Vengadasai, I will give a reply to your answer later. Let me come to the end of this topic and I will give. It is a good question, but I won't uh, disturb uh, the class now. Hmm? Now, be careful. Then, an estimate, also they have to give an estimate of the future annual income and expenditure. I think this answers Vengadasai's question also. See, when you are studying in uh, say CPT or college or maybe even in school, plus two, then you might have studied accounts of non-profit organizations. Accounts of non-profit organizations. Actually, the term non-profit is wrong. Every organization has to generate a surplus. If you have a deficit, who will fund it? Therefore, all organizations should get income more than expenditure. That surplus of ex income over expenditure, you can call it profit. Okay, you can call it profit. So it is not necessary that you have to do business to get profit. Even in a non-profit activity, you might collect more donations than expense. That difference will be called surplus. Under the income, just to relate this to Income Tax Act, the Income Tax Act is very strict. If you are getting your exemption under Section 12A family, then one of the 12A family, then you have to apply 85% of your income for the purpose of the objects of the okay so even there the income tax act is accepting 15 percent surplus they are saying that can be kept permanently you, you can keep it permanently as your long-term protection you can keep it as a corpus like that 15 percent need not apply every year 85 percent should be applied in that year itself otherwise you have to i mean i don't want to teach you income tax but my dear friends you again, I'm telling you, your client comes to me, Section 8 company guy, that will be an NGO, non-governmental organization. So the first meeting will be, discussion will not be on ATG 12A. It will be on whether to form trust, society or Section 8. So I have to find out what is their goal, what is their long-term vision. And then based on that, I will give them my advice. If it is a small family putting their uh, corpus and doing some small donation, go for trust. If it is a football club or some people who want to, you know, uh, support group, uh, cancer victims, relative group, I say go for society. Or if it is going to be pan India, large organization, lot of funding from government is going to come, foreign contribution. Then I will say, Chalo, go for Section 8. You are, you are anticipating CSR. Then go for Section 8 like that. So depends. I will. Depends on that. Once we decide on that, we have to give an estimate of the future annual income and expenditure of the company for next three years because they are asking see section 8 company is not an easy thing to form i have done only two in my life i have i have incorporated 2000 plus normal companies but section 8 in my practice during 35 years i have done only two Why? because all my other ngo clients i have made them either trust or society for reasons only two are large enough for me to allow them to become section 8 and one was a chamber of commerce. So, and believe me, forming a Section 8 company is very, very difficult. You have to get certificate from so many people, you, uh, from the collector, from the so many people, from the district people, whether this is a genuine car trust. Also, they want to see what is your plan of action, etc. Okay. So, just like that, you cannot form a Section 8 company. Also, declaration by an advocate or a chartered accountant cost accountant or company secretary in form one number INC 14. Same as what we did there. Okay. And by each of the persons making the application, 
in form number INC 15. So there, people who are signing the memorandum and first directors, you remember, they gave declaration. Na? Similarly here, the chartered accountant who is engaged in the formation and the persons making the application, each one should give a declaration in form number INC 14 and INC 15 that the memorandum and articles have been drawn up in conformity with the provisions of section 8 and rules made there under all the requirements of the act and the rules made there under relating to registration under section 8 and matters incidental incidental means for the purpose of in order to form section 8 company we have to do things that is done correctly Supplemental means after we have done something, in addition, we have to do certain other things. That is called supplemental. Okay. Everything has been done correctly. Okay. Now, uh, boss, it's a good question, Surendranji, on 13 and 31. I will tell you, even I had a doubt about this because INC 13 is basically a physical form. Okay. INC 31 is an electronic form. But today, if you go to Spice Plus and you select Section 8 company, automatically INC 13 will come there. Automatically INC 31 will come and fall into that form. So today with version 3, this question cannot be answered directly except to say this is only electronic. Though, my dear friend, as you rightly point out, INC 13 is a physical form in those days. And it was signed and uploaded. Now, no. When you're doing Section 8, Automatically, the minute you say section 8, automatically INC 13 will come and INC 31 will come automatically. Okay. Why 13 and 31 separately? Because this is a special type of company. So they want to give a separate format rather than the usual format. Wonderful. Now, very important. A company registered under this section shall not alter the provisions of its memorandum or articles except with the previous approval of central government, previous. Later on, we will see procedure for alteration of memorandum of normal company articles. You can pass the special resolution, inform the government. No need to get approval. They will register it. That's all. But whereas, so long as you are within the law, there is no problem. They cannot refuse to register. Whereas, for Section 8 company, Pehle, before you go for alteration, you have to go to the central government. You have to tell them, you have to get the permission and then only you can do it. Approval, then only you can. Okay. Now, such a company, Section 8 company, somebody is starting. After all, Section 8 company is a um, charitable type, you know, but somebody started in good faith. They wanted to do something. Many times, you know, youngsters come to me, they have huge dreams. They say, Mr. Srikan, we want to do NGO. What you want to do? We want to do this, that. We want to collect uh, um, all the garbage from everywhere through the Kabuliwala. Then that Kabuliwala, we will collect it through an app. Uh, then we will uh, collect it in one place, plastics. Then that plastic will be uh, recycled and we'll make it into fuel. Incidentally, a very, very viable technology project. But they will say, Sir, we also want to do good to society. So we will form it a Section 8 company. Then I'll tell them, Baba, don't do it. Because later on, you will want funding, etc. Section 8 company cannot do that. It cannot go for funding. Nobody will give funding to Section 8 company. At that time, what you will do? They won't listen to me. Because you are young people now. You will not listen to Buddhas. See, what does the Buddha know? Nothing. Useless fellow. Huh? He knows nothing. He will simply tell nonsense. I have to listen. My fate... Uh, Okay, like that. <laughs> when I was 18 years old, when I became a char I became a chartered accountant at 21. When I became a chartered accountant, my father also practicing, he was 49, 45, 48, around that age. I was thinking, hey, retirement age should be 50. Yeah. That man should retire at 50 because I'm a young man. I'm ready to take over. When I became 35, I realized, hey, retirement age should be 65. Yeah. Uh, now, currently 65. Now, now that I am 50 plus, I am thinking, hey, maybe retirement should be 80. Yeah. <laughs> so, that will never come for chartered accountant. Point here is, my dear friend, this gentleman will start Section 8 company. Thereafter, they will suddenly realize that it's of no use to them. So, they'll come back to me two years later and say, 
Mr. Srikant, we want to change. We want to convert. Chalo, convert. We want to convert to OPC. No, not possible. Okay. <laughs> Section 8 company cannot convert to OPC. Okay, sir. We want to convert to private company. Okay, do. I will convert to you to private company. We want to convert to public company. Convert. You can get yourself converted um, into any of these companies. Um, okay. Ramadevi, I will answer your question shortly. Huh? Again, I will answer it. Not now. I have seen your question, but I will answer it later. Uh, again, from now on till I complete Section 8 company, no, uh, I won't answer any question. Please put the question, but I will not answer it. Because concentrated will finish Section 8. So we will convert. Special resolution in general meeting for approving such conversion. First step, you pass a special resolution. Call all your members. First, get them to pass a special resolution. What is special resolution? No, don't ask. Because it is going to be taught to you in management and administration. Don't worry. We will. I will tell you. You will tell me what is special resolution in a little way later. Abito, uh, be careful. Don't assume it is something. There is a need for majority of members to agree. Nah? This is special majority. Hmm? So special resolution should be passed in a general meeting for approving that conversion. See, for calling that meeting, nah, for passing that resolution, you will give a notice. In that notice, you have to give an explanatory statement where you have to set out the reasons for the conversion. Why are we converting like that? Luckily for CE Section 8 company, there will be other members also. So you have to convince and then you have to get the resolution. First, a special resolution passed. Then you have to make an application in form number INC 18. INC 18 application by Section 8 company to regional director for conversion into any other kind of company. INC 18 should be filed with the regional director. Now we come to regional director. Boss, ROC incorporated the company. But to change it, you cannot go to ROC. You have to go to his boss. The registrar of companies is the guy who registers. To change, you cannot go to him. You have to go to his boss. Meaning what? See, every state has a regional Registrar of companies. Southern states together will have one region, regional director. West, one region. I think central is also one region. North, one region. East, one region. So each region has one regional director. So the regional director south sits in Chennai. Okay, He is the head of the region south. Under him, there are how many ROCs? How many ROCs? Every state will have one. Na. So, Kerala one, Karnataka one, Andhra, I think, Andhra Pradesh one, Telangana one, uh, Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu has two. Okay, rightly or wrongly, we have two ROCs. Okay, here is a GK question. Tamil Nadu has two registrar of companies, registrars of company. Don't say registrar of companies. That is what I said is wrong. Plural of plural of registrar of company is registrars of company. Just like mothers in law, registrars of company. So Tamil Nadu has two registrars of company. One other state in India. In India, one other state has two registrars. One other state has two registrars, which is that state. And where are the registrars? In Tamil Nadu, one register is in Chennai, of course. The other register is in a city where I have another residence. It is called Coimbatore. Okay, it is called Coimbatore. Inshallah, my next class will be conducted from Coimbatore. Okay, that place we have one more register city. Two registers are Doha in Tamil Nadu. Okay, which is the other state where there are two registrars and uh, where are these registers sitting? This is a GK quiz. Huh? Not GK, it's a quiz. Let us see. So, you have to make an up. So, the, all these registrars will report to their boss, who is the regional head. Now, this application is going to the regional director along with the copy of the notice, resolution, reasons. 
Also, you have to give a certified true copy of the special resolution, notice, explanatory statement should be filed in form number MGT 14. When you come to management and administration, we will teach you that whenever a company passes a special resolution and certain other type of resolution, whenever a company passes special resolution and certain other type of resolution, within 30 days, the details of that resolution, the particulars should be filed with the registrar in form number MGT 14. So you should make an application in INC 18. Also with the registrar, you have to file form MGT 14. When you say registrar, what you mean is upload in MCA. Even this INC 18 is uploaded in MCA, but it will go to the regional director through the software. He will see it. Okay. Now, it will be filed with the registrar. Along with that, you should also publish a public notice in form INC 19. Very, very important. See, this company is a Section 8 company. Section 8 company. And it, has, it could have had an impact on society. Therefore, they say, when this company is going to convert into a normal commercial company, Public also should be made aware. Public interest is involved. So everybody in the country should be given public notice how to give by publishing in the newspaper. So they say, along with this regional director ka thing, you should also publish the company at its own expense, should publish within a week, within a week from the date of submitting application to the regional director. So you apply you in INC 18, within one week, within one week. So if today you are doing it Monday, then before Sunday, one week get over on Sunday midnight, within a week, you have to not seven days, a week. From the date you have to give the, you have to submit the application, right? You have to, sub, you have to publish the advertisement in one vernacular newspaper. Vernacular means local language. Vernacular means local language. Uh, each state has a vernacular. Like that's the problem with India. You know, we're not one country, one language. Okay, we are many, many, many languages. So one in vernacular newspaper in the principal vernacular language. So if you're if you are in um, Ahmedabad, you'll see in Gujarat, in Gujarati, not Hindi, in Gujarati. Okay, like that in Maharashtra, in Marathi. Okay, like that. So it will be done in each language, whichever is the principal. For example, Pakka Nagpur. Then you will give in Hitavada, where in Marathi, where people will read. Everybody will know. Even people like me who don't know uh, other than my mother tongue can read. Okay. So if you're doing it in Tamil Nadu, Tamil, Kerala, Malayalam, like that. Okay. And at least, and at least one seen English language in an English newspaper because there could be fools like me you know who cannot read anything other than their mother tongue and English so they, for them in English for illiterate people like me who cannot read Hindi in English okay in English it has to be given in an English newspaper having a wide circulation in that district and on the website of the company if any and as may be notified or directed by the central government whatever hmm? Sometimes you can apply to the regional director and tell him, Baba, we are a small Section 8 company, very little impact, kindly exempt me. He may do that. He may do that. Okay. But that is again subject to his. And a copy of the notice shall be sent forthwith to the regional director. Forthwith means as soon as possible. As soon as possible. Okay. It should be sent to uh, the regional director. Form INC 19. Okay. Now, in addition to giving this advertisement, this notice should also be filed. Uh, just give me one minute. Sir, now our online class sir, now three oh, people. Sorry, 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 hmm? sorry. sorry. Uh, a client is calling and uh, you know how it is. Chalo. So, notice to be served by registered post on the following authorities. Who are they? Chief Commissioner of Income Tax. Income tax officer who has jurisdiction. Why? Because this Section 8 fellow might have claimed exemption. 
So the chief commissioner and the income tax officer should know, hey, this fellow is going to convert to commercial. Note it. So that we have to serve notice on them. Also charity commissioner in some states. In Tamil Nadu, we don't have a charity commissioner. In Maharashtra, you have a charity commissioner. Some states have charity commissioner. The charity commissioner is in charge for non-profit organizations. So the charity commissioner in some states. In Tamil Nadu, we don't have charity commissioner. The chief secretary of the state in which the registered office of the company is situated. See, the chief secretary is the topmost administrative officer in that state. Just he is the principal secretary. Chief secretary reports directly to the chief minister. Every day in the morning, the state car head and the IG of police of that state and the chief secretary, they have to report to the chief minister and they have to inform him, sir, everything is okay in the state. Security is home security is good. Everything is okay, please. Like they have to assure him any complaint, anything received from the people of this country, the people's representative, the chief minister will question the revenue, the administrative service. That is why the ministers are there, Baba. We are electing all these buggers and pushing them there. Why? Not for uh, making their sons into chief minister or prime minister, but uh, to take care of our interest. So whenever a citizen having a problem, he reports to his representative and that representative takes it to the chief minister and the chief minister will take it to the chief secretary and the IG and they'll ask him, what is happening, Mr. Chief Secretary? In this district, there is a water problem. Why are you not done anything? So that is the chief secretary. So an NGO might be actively engaged in one district or entire state. They may be doing a lot of good. Now the chief secretary will be informed or they may be doing bad also. They might have done some damage. Whatever it is, the chief secretary should have a right to say, it's no problem, let them convert. Similarly, any organization or department of the central government or state government or other authority under whose jurisdiction the company has been operating. Okay. So suppose, for example, uh, they are operating under the education ministry, then that ministry or department should be given a uh, notice. Right, sir? See, they might have taken some grant ma, from the state government or from the department. Government grants might have been given. So simply you cannot take a government grant and then run away. So the government will say, Baba, you have taken two crores grant from me. You have What have you done? You show. Moreover, you agreed to continue for five years. So we gave you three years. Now two years you are saying you are converting. Give me back my money and go. So that is something that the government can complain. So all the stakeholders. Now, now do you see who are the stakeholders? These are all stakeholders. Okay. They, they have to be given notice. So any of the above authorities may make representations to RD within 60 days of receipt of notice after giving opportunity to the company to state its views. So that authority should call the company and ask, hey, what are you going to do? Then if everything is acceptable, no problem. They'll give NOC. Otherwise, they will make a representation to RD. Okay. Where the company, where the company has obtained any special status, privilege, exemption like income tax, benefit or grant from any authority, then no objection certificate from the concerned authority to be obtained and filed. It's correct only now. See, you are taking grant from the government. You can't simply run away and convert into a, you can't simply run away and convert yourself into a company, private or public company. Before that, you answer and go. If there is no such commitment, no problem. They will give NOC. Where there is no grant, nothing, don't bother. But if there is a grant, get NOC and come. Income tax department, get NOC and come. In case there is any old demand or non-application under Section 11, that has to be accounted. Now you pay the tax and come. Okay. Are you able to understand the complexity here? Are you also able to understand one more thing, my dear friends? Subjects you are studying like college or school as if geography, history, mathematics like that. But once you become a CA, a member of our institute, you can't have compartment like that. I can't say today uh, income tax day, tomorrow subject is uh, accountancy, day after tomorrow, tomorrow company law like that. When a client is sitting in front of me, I have to give him a solution based on all the knowledge, including general knowledge also. Okay. Just to give you, and not only for practicing CA, even if you become a CFO or head finance of a large company, believe me, your board of directors in MD will expect you to be aware of all subjects 
when talking you have to comment about everything that is why our institute is ensuring that your knowledge level is expert level knowledge it's okay so that expert can combine and give advice so regional director on satisfaction shall issue an order approving conversion of section 8 company into any other company then rd may apply terms and conditions i am going to give you only see think again this fellow has said i am a not profit organization based on that we have given him a lot of benefits now quietly he is trying to become commercial before he does that we will put certain condition one condition you cannot claim from the date of conversion any special status exemption or privilege that is out you cannot say i am income tax is exempt no all that exemption privilege is out you will not have it if you have acquired any immovable property free of cost or at a concessional cost from any government or authority please note it every every word is important okay you have acquired immovable property free of cost or at a concessional cost from government then you have to pay the difference between the cost at which you acquired and the market price at the time of conversion to the government or to the authority then it becomes yours or else you surrender the property and walk out that's all okay any accumulated profit or unutilized income of the company brought forward from previous year shall be first utilized to settle all statutory dues like gst income tax pf esi over then any fellow has lent money you have to pay back the creditors lenders suppliers service provider like audi tr etc and others including employees and lastly lastly any loans advanced by the promoters etc if after that if there is any balance that cannot be used by this company it shall be transferred to the investor education and protection fund this iepf is a very very interesting topic when you come to declaration of dividend you will learn about this i may not be able to teach that topic but you will be taught about investor education and protection fund in that fund is a common fund and this money which see you have how did that money come when you are enjoying exemption status so now you cannot take it and use it for you cannot take it and use it for commercial purpose so that money after paying all that uh, loan etc 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 should be transferred to the iepf investor education and protection fund what that fund is how it will be managed and all in detail you will study when you come to declaration of dividend okay so whenever i am relating to some other future topic now just make a note of it when you come there you take it off what do you say have a notebook in you know, iepf declaration of dividend make a note later on when the topic is start clearly you will learn there at the time you cross it now i know it like now the company should have filed all its financial statements and annual returns okay up to the financial year preceding the submission of the application meaning suppose the application is being made in august of this year up to 31 323 everything should be filed okay now so, suppose you are making the application after 3 months from the date of preceding financial year see if you are making it in august let us say you are making it on august 20th then uh 20th july 20th uh, june uh 20th may so more than 3 months after the expiry of it is after see 31st march financial year 23 march will end on 31st march financial year 2020 22 23 financial year 22 23 ending on 31 3 23 we are making the application in on 20th august after the expiry of 3 months from 31 3 means 31 3 means april may june june 30th ho oh, three months ho gaya iske baad we are doing it after that we are doing therefore we have to prepare a financial statement which is not earlier than 30 days from the date of filing the application okay which means if i am making the application on 20th august ideally ideally i should get my statement prepared statement of financial position certified by chartered accountant 
on which date ideally on 31st of july and file that why because you are making the application on in august after that three months have gone four months have gone so within three months if you are doing it they are saying okay but beyond the three months if you are doing it then prepare one more statement within 30 days preceding 30 days 30 days back less than 30 days back it should be okay file it get it certified by a chapter okay these are all very reasonable conditions we can we have nothing you know to object to these things am i correct once you receive, receive the approval of rd the company should convene a general meeting pass a special resolution for amending its memorandum of association now it can declare dividend na it can apply its profit for declaring dividend no need for charitable you can have commercial objects do everything change yourself and then go to the registrar file the doc, file this amended documents with the registrar and also agree to declare to you will agree adhere to these conditions three conditions are na you will declare i will agree with these conditions your honor like that thereafter the registrar will register and with that you are some other kind of company conversion ho gaya stop okay so i have given it to you in the form of a uh, sort of flow chart do you see that arrow marks are there okay so the making it easy for you to remember the flow of procedure right so this conversion is huge maybe they might ask you a question also in the exam the central government that is the regional director may revoke the license when when the company contravenes the requirements of this condition for example we said we will not engage in commercial we are doing commercial activity okay whatever if you are violating the requirements or where the affairs of the company are conducted fraudulently or in violation of the objects of the company see your your object was to promote social welfare you are going there and doing all sorts of nonsense you means see whenever i say aap to don't think i mean you i mean that person whoever i am imagining that that company's md etc are sitting in front of me and i am telling you so don't think i am telling you not aap not to up now respect is up so i am not like on revocation re revoke means what in english in simple meaning in english revoke means take back are you able to understand take back okay so that what is it le, le jayenge i don't know we take it back okay wapas le jaye wapas line we take it back okay and why because when i gave you at the time of giving i gave with some condition you are breaking it you are not deserving it so i will revoke r e v o k e revoke spelling r e v o k e revocation c a there the c will be pronounced as k okay on revocation the registrar shall put limited or private limited against the name thereafter that's it but before that revocation the central government must give it a written notice of its intention to revoke the license and opportunity to be heard in the matter you might say sir is it not better instead of going through this conversion process simply i will contravene thereafter that fellow will anyway put limited or private limited against me be careful if you are interested in retaining that section 8 status that will go so a company which wants to retain that section 8 status will be in deep trouble if the license is revoked yeah revoke means cancel cancel i am using take back in a different way i am saying i gave it to you now i am taking it back cancel also correct cancel okay cancel correct revoke means cancel license already given will be cancel agreed that also a good word i am thinking in terms of i give you a license at the time of revocation i take back the license please note one more thing the license is given for what for dispensing with the words limited or private limited so for example there is a chamber of commerce right hindustan chamber of commerce limited but that word limited is removed they only have hindustan chamber of commerce it is an old section 25 company is a chamber of commerce in chennai where i am one of the members it's a old section 25 see before section 8 similar to section 8 the earlier section was called section 25 so that is why many of the buddhas like me you will find 
we keep referring to section 25, section 25 like that. So, aaj to it is section 8. It was Purana Wala, it was section 25. So, section 25 company. It was licensed under section 25. Hindustan Timur. So, they have been allowed to remove the words limited. Once that license is revoked, cancelled as she rightly says, as Neha Madam says, once it is cancelled, then what happened? They have to put again limited. So that everybody will know this comp This is not chamber, this is ordinary company. In fact, once the word uh, license is removed, na, if it is a chamber of commerce, it cannot have the word chamber of commerce. It has to change to some other word. Okay. Of course, before uh, uh, before such revocation, the central government must give a, a written notice of its intention to revoke the license and opportunity word in the matter. Where the license is revoked, the central government may by order in public interest direct that the company be wound up under this act or amalgamated with another company. However, no such order shall be made unless the company is given a reasonable opportunity of being heard. This is exactly what my good friend uh, Mr. Venkatasai is telling. Instead of doing all these processes for conversion, is it good to liquidate? Better. My humble view would be that. You know, actually, what happens now? We have taken a lot of trouble to make this company. Why liquidate? And liquidation again will take a lot of time. So better to go for uh, conversion also. Depends. It's a choice that you will take depending on the position. But on revocation, the central government may find this company has done so much nonsense, so much uh, bad things, it is better to close that company. So they may say, you wind up. Or else, like Satyam Computers, what happened? Once Satyam did all nonsense, Ramalingaraju did all sorts of fraud and nonsense. Finally, that company was a good company. The employees were doing a good job. So that was merged, that is taken over by uh, another company, Mahindra. Tech Mahindra formed and it took over. So like that, they may amalgamate with another company, provided that other company also should be Section 8, registered under this section. So, where there is an uh, amalgamation with another company, okay, the central government provides for such amalgamation. Okay, see, this exception is given because later on, when you come to final and decide to do self-paced study of company law, at that time, you will find there is a chapter for amalgamation, separate chapter amalgamation, uh, uh, compromises, arrangements and amalgamations. That has a totally different provision. Now, when that Section 8 is company ka license is revoked and order of amalgamation is given, notwithstanding anything to the contrary contained, notwithstanding anything to the contrary contained, meaning what? Even though there are other sections in the Act, in spite of that, whatever those sections are saying, central government can pass an order for amalgamation, forming a single company, etc., etc. Whatever order central government passes will be superseding, will be better than, will be bigger than the provisions of companies that relating to amalgamation. That is what notwithstanding means. Right? Now, if on the winding up or dissolution, after winding up, we have paid all the debts and we have also given all the uh, uh, everything. Something is still there. If you remember, earlier we transferred the money on conversion to a IEPF to the where there is any surplus left we transferred it to the IEPF on conversion. Here, when the central government is revoking the license, company is being wound up, all the assets are sold Liabilities are paid. After that, there is something left that has to be transferred or credited to the insolvency and bankruptcy fund, which is formed under the IBC, okay? the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. I think you are going to study it in, I think, I don't know if you studied it. I think you are going to study it in intermediate only, the new syllabus. I'm not really aware. Okay, so IBC, that is a fund for that insolvency and bankruptcy fund. So any surplus, you know, which is there will be transferred to that fund. What, what will happen with that fund? 
मुझे नहीं मालूम आई डोंट नो आई एम श्योर इट बी यूज फॉर सम गुड पर्पस बाय द गवर्नमेंट आई डोंट नो ओके ए कंपनी रजिस्टर्ड अंडर दिस सेक्शन शैल अमाल गमेट ओनली विद अनदर कंपनी रजिस्टर्ड अंडर दिस सेक्शन राइट ओपीसी के नॉट अमाल गमेट भूमि जी बिकॉज इफ यू अमाल गमेट यू विल बिकम टू मेंबर्स अगेन एंड अगेन ओपीसी यू पीपल आर ऑल कंफ्यूजिंग OPC is a very very small type of organization. It is meant for one person to run a business with limited liability. I am repeating, OPC is meant for helping one person to run a small business or medium business with only one shareholder enjoying limited liability. That is all. So all these complex things like amalgamation, blah blah blah. If the OPC wants to do, first thing it has to convert into private or public thing. there after you do whatever you want there after you can amalgamate okay have you understood somebody else was also asking about opc let me take it up uh, that was also again opc they are getting a little confusing see swarup sahaya was asking sir opc can convert to public limited after increasing its members to 7 sir if you increase your members to 7 baba you are not one person company hai na <laughs> बहु है यू आर नो मोर ओके यू आर नॉट सिंगल एक नहीं है ना बहु है ना सो यू हैव टू फर्स्ट कन्वर्ट टू पब्लिक कंपनी फॉर ऑटोमेटिकली यू हैव टू इंक्रीज योर नंबर टू सेवन सो वेन एवर यू वांट टू डू सम सर्कस विद ओपीसी फर्स्ट एनी सर्कस यू वांट टू डू विद ओपीसी फर्स्ट कम आउट ऑफ ओपीसी स्टेटस फर्स्ट कम आउट ऑफ ओपीसी स्टेटस कन्वर्ट इन टू एनी अदर टाइप ऑफ कंपनी प्राइवेट अदर देन सेक्शन एट then you do whatever you want you amalgamate you take on new shareholder do anything you want but as an opc there is a lot of limitation have you understood because many of you are asking opc opc as if opc can do anything and everything no opc is limited form of organization again i am repeating opc is meant for helping a single person running a small business or medium business to operate as a company with the limited liability one person the minute you want to do big big things amalgamate so seven people you want to get public share you want to go for uh, funding opc no that is why many times when people will come to me and say mr shrikant i want to form opc so i'll ask him baba what are you going to do in the long run in the long run i'm going to go for funding this that no. then go for private company say it away go why form opc then convert to private and all stay it away from private after all you work for private limited company you just need one more member one more member one more director huh? how long it like i just one question i'll ask him are you married yes is your wife employed no that's all you got two people form a company private company enjoy boss husband and wife for one <laughs> am i correct two bodies one soul so that is one person only you take all the decision let us sign only in the paper that's all why go through this opc nonsense and then later on conversion why stay it away go for private but if that man is very clear sir i will not expand i just want to run this business for a long term i don't want any disturbance sole proprietary unlimited liability i want limited liability then opc are able to understand my point because you should know see you are you should be like a workman which tool should you use for which purpose so just because opc is there it's not panacea for all evils opc is meant for one type of a niche company private limited company is meant for a closed group of people running a small or even a large business without outside funding just borrowing from the bank putting their own money they are running then private is enough for the minute you say i want to have public funding i want to have those i want to have that then only public so every form of organizational in company is meant for a different purpose so if you select one purpose then don't say can i do that can i do this you have to become that so if you are a private company then you need more fund we want to get public money hey, you have to convert to public only then you can get we will be seeing how to convert also okay just like when company is winding up then time auction is happened yes auction, you mean a u c t i o n a u c t i o n yeah auction will also for selling immobile property 
Sometimes you can go for auction. Yes. See, school can be, some schools are section 8 also. You can be trust also. Mr. Saruna Karthik, if you ask me, if some if a client comes to me and says, I want to run your school, I will straight away say go for trust. No need for section 8. It's only a nuisance. You have to go to the MCA, waste your time. Huh? Go for trust. Only income tax department you have to answer in. At least in the state of Tamil Nadu, to my knowledge, Karnataka and Kerala, you have to only answer to the uh, Andhra Pradesh also, to my knowledge. You have to only answer to the income tax department. Nobody else. So, better form your trust. Register it and be happy. Hmm? So, why school will start Section 8? You have to ask the founder of the school. I would suggest no. If that man had come to me, I would have told him, don't do it, sir. Go for trust easy. 1023C is there. Exemption. 12A, farm is there, ADG, enjoy. Why you are getting it? You be the trustee, get five more donkeys, make them trustees, enjoy your life. Hmm? Section 8, and all, and all, AG, MBG, M, all that sort of nonsense. Hmm? Okay. Anyway, this is my view. The views expressed Karen are the views of CECON, Chartered Accountant, practicing, and not the views of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. Regarding which form of organization is better, for which purpose, I am expressing my opinion. Hmm? You may have a different opinion, which I will value. OPC can be a member of Section 8. Uh, yes, it can be. Yeah. As a company, it can be. Because OPC is also a company. It can be a member of Section 8. It can be. I don't see any anything wrong in OPC becoming member of Section 8. No problem. But remember, OPC cannot do investment activity or NBFC activity. Just it can be a member. No problem. But again, I will ask you, why are you doing it? That OPC, one man will be there, na, that one person. That that gentleman, let him become a member. Na. Anyway, if you still want OPC to be a member, chalo, yeah. he can. <laughs> See, <laughs> when I was studying in plus two, partnership problem will be there. Amar, Akbar and Antony in partnership or Akbar and Antony in partnership admit Amar, like that and all. In those cases, they will say sacrificing ratio is uh, two, uh, 6 by uh, what is that? Uh, 9 by 13, 11 by 21 and all they will say. Hey, in real life, when a client comes to me to form a partnership or admit a new partner, if they tell me gaining ratio, sacrificing ratio, I say, look here, you have one third, one third, one third or whatever, but I tell you take like that. Okay. Why all these complicated uh, decimals and all or fractions? Only in the exam, I have to write all that. Here, I don't. You are my client. I am not telling you. This you give ten percent, he will give ten percent. That man will get twenty percent. That's all over. Huh? Go. <laughs> okay. no. Will we learn how to form your trust? I trust you will, but I don't know where. I hope you will. To my knowledge, it's I think it's I don't know. It's I don't know. Actually, I don't know. But I know how to form your trust. I I didn't learn it from the institute. I learned on my own. Many things you learn to learn on your own, sir. Once you get into practice, no, they won't teach you. You have to learn somewhere. We have to learn and we have to do. Syllabus, no syllabus. Everything is syllabus. <laughs> a client comes to me and says, Vam trust. I cannot tell him, Institute has not taught me, therefore I will not know. I have to learn it and do it. That's all. Hmm? I think it is there somewhere. I don't know. It must be there. Chalo, even if it is not there, so what? Yeah. See, if the C in the CA program, na, once I become a member of Institute of Chartered Accounts of India, my institute, she taught me how to learn. My institute, the Institute of Chartered Accounts of India, she taught me. I use she because she is my mother. The Institute of Chartered Accounts of India is like my mother. She taught me, not subjects, but she taught me how to learn. She taught me how to learn. Once I become a member of our institute, I become a learner. Anything I will learn. That's all. No need for people to put in syllabus, teach me. Only then I will know like that. Okay. This is my humble submission. Please don't mistake me. It's my Humble view. You may be having different idea. I will be. I respect you, but my humble view. Okay. Chalo. Um, now, just like OPC had exemption, this fellow, Section 8 fellow also has exemption. For example, it can call its general meeting by giving a clear 14 days notice instead of 21 days. Later on, when you come to management and administration, there we will find section normally all other companies have to give 21 days gap between service of notice and date of meeting. Whereas for section 8 alone, the 21 will be read as 14. Similarly, minimum number of directors, etc., independent directors and all does not apply to this one. Oh. 
independent directors not in your syllabus for intermediate it is there in final please don't waste your time just to know that your nomination and remuneration committee shareholder relationship which is there in final syllabus but just know it need not to do all these things very important normally normally a firm means not llp a firm normal firm under the partnership act that firm cannot be a member of a company normally exception a firm may be a member of a company registered under section 8 why because in those days chambers of commerce were could become section 8 or section 25 now that chamber of commerce will have many firms which are members which are firm so in order to facilitate that similarly for your information the mumbai stock the bombay stock exchange and a bsc it is a section 25 company the bombay stock exchange the presidency club where i am a member in chennai the presidency club is a section 825 company now section 8 okay like that the boat club the madras boat club section 8 company like that so these and all may have firm as a member the bombay stock exchange will have brokers who are firms so in order to facilitate that they said section 8 exemption firm may be a member okay can section 8 company have subsidiary can have no problem sir can have again it can have why not because when you are incorporating section 8 na you it can be either a private company or a public company so qua private or public no no restriction see again you have to be careful be careful that subsidiary cannot carry on commercial activity are you able to understand through a subsidiary see now i i i can i know where surendran ji might be coming from he might be saying sir i can have a subsidiary then that subsidiary will do commercial activity the minute you do that it will be contravention of the condition and your your license will be revoked so be careful you can form a subsidiary for some specific purpose you form a subsidiary nothing wrong but that should also be for the objects of the trust you cannot simply form for objects of the company you cannot form a commercial subsidiary no have a clear student if that was there in your mind ji i hope that also i have clarified nsc is not a section 8 company the national stock exchange was formed by the government okay then it became later on it got incorporated under the companies act okay for it's a normal company not a section 8 company national stock exchange limited it is a public company under the it's a i think it is a government company meaning the shareholders of nscl are central government and i think sebi rbi and all so to my knowledge nscl is a company normal company commercial company it makes money it and it declares dividend etc it is a company under the it was originally statutory thereafter it got in registered under the companies act as a company nscl either that or i think at the time of formation itself it was incorporated under the companies act 1956 with uh, central government and uh, rbi and sebi and all as members okay for your information maximum number of members in section 8 if it is a private company for private company maximum you know that 200 public no limit so at the time of formation what did you say is it going to be private or public if you are saying it's private then 200 if you are saying public no limit am i correct so you can register as a private or as a public company hmm? so if you are saying private then um 200 public no limit okay chalo moving on time is really really running out for me but it's okay we'll we'll go aram se so long as you are able to understand i hope i have also converted uh, i also i also converted i also ha huh. somebody was asking hey i want to congratulate many of you ruturaj honmane rama devi rahul sharma uh, uh, murugan gm uh, gn murugan uh, venkata sai who is even more specific uh, pune and mumbai pune and mumbai okay maharashtra is the only other state in india which has two registrars okay and uh, the registrar uh, is in mumbai and pune okay all of you have done it surendra and reeto great uh, mr sanjana ben chauhan mr sanjana ben chauhan wants to know what is the full form of mgd madam do you notice one thing many forms that we are now discussing in this chapter 
are having I and C. Do you notice that? I and C. Why? Because these forms are under the chapter called incorporation. In these forms are coming under the chapter called incorporation. Right? So, since they come under this chapter, they are uh, we are calling it I and C. Same way, MGT 14 is coming under the topic called management and administration. So that management and I management ka short form MGT. So that MGT, so there is no expansion. It is short form. Just like INC is short form for incorporation, MGT is short form for M management. Similarly, next topic we'll be seeing prospectus and allotment of securities. Prospectus and allotment of securities. There you will find PAS. The forms will be called PAS1, PAS2 like that. So whenever you come across these alphanumeric strings, remember that alphabet part is the abbreviation or short form of our acronym or short form of either a word or the first letters of the words of the chapter. Are you able to understand? So this is how you have to understand. Uh, Sarvanaji, I will not give a break now. Give me another 10 minutes. Then I will give a break. Okay. Because I don't want to stop here. I will go on with some simple topics so that we can go to memorandum and then I will stop. Hmm? See, these are all simple topics. We can quickly go on. When is the company coming into existence? From the date of incorporation mentioned in the certificate of incorporation. The date of incorporation mentioned in the certificate of incorporation. The subscribers to the memorandum and all other persons will become members of the company. So from which date? From the date mentioned in the certificate. The actual fact may be different. But what is mentioned from that date? This is very important because a contract may be entered into. That date becomes important. Was it entered after the company came into existence or before? How to decide? Date mentioned in the certificate of incorporation. On that day, the subscribers will all be incorporated into a company. So that company will be a body corporate. It will have it by exercising all the functions of an incorporated company. It will become a separate legal entity having perpetual succession. It can acquire, hold and dispose of property in its own name. Okay. Movable, immovable, tangible, intangible. It can contract. It can enter into contract in its own name. It can file a suit in the high court or court in its own name. Similarly, other people can file suit against the company by that name. So the on the date of incorporation mentioned in the certificate, a new entity has come into being. You can almost imagine, you know, those of you who have read or seen Frankenstein movie, huh? uh, it, suddenly, you know, uh, uh, a human being will come out. That inanimated body, cadaver, will suddenly get life. The story of Frankenstein monster, where a man will, crea will create life. So like that, you know, we are bringing a Frankenstein monster into existence. We are giving life. Okay? Literally. Of course, luckily for us, this monster has no body, no mind. It is controlled by us. Okay? Now, not by us, by the persons who formed it, by the directors and by the shareholders. The company comes into existence from the date mentioned in the certificate. Even if it is wrongly mentioned, the legal fiction of the company comes into existence from that date. See, the company was incorporated on one day, actually. But the date mentioned was earlier date. Now, so they said earlier date is the correct date. Even though it was actually incorporated on 8th, the certificate says 6th. So the company came into existence on 6th. Legal fiction. Legal fiction. Yeah. Story or fiction created by law. So, why should we register the memorandum? Because the memorandum contains the objects for which the company is formed. It, it identifies the scope of the operations. Once the memorandum and articles are registered, then it becomes a public document. There is a section 399, not in your syllabus. According to that section, any document filed with the registrar under the NCA website is a public document. Meaning what? Every person 
third party, unconnected person who wants to enter into a contract with the company is presumed to have knowledge. Presumed means what? He might not have actually read the memorandum. Oh, he has not read it. But still, he will become presumed to have the knowledge. He knows it. How do you say that? That is the law. That is called legal fiction. Presumption, rule of presumption. This principle now that once a memorandum, articles or any document is uploaded in MCA portal, it is public document under section 399. After that, once it is done, every person is presumed to have knowledge. Means even if he does not have, he cannot say, I don't know. If he says, we laugh at him and say, Baba, see the MCA website, it is there. No, it is there, but I didn't see. Sorry, you are presumed to have the knowledge. Even if you have not read, it shall be presumed that you have read. I know this is very unfair, but that is called rule of presumption. Are you able to understand? See, there is something called presumptive taxation. You know, 44 AD. What does it say? On the gross receipts of a trader on the revenue, straight away 8% is the profit. What is the real profit? No need. Legal fiction. 8%. You pay 8% car tax, no questions asked, no need for books of account, nothing. Like that. This is called presumptive. Presumptive means legal fiction. Are you able to understand? That word will be, that word deeming will be used. Deemed to have knowledge. The minute you say deem, remember, the minute the law uses the word deem, D-E-E-M, deem, that means don't bring fact. It is presumed, even though, okay, like that. This is called the doctrine of constructive notice. Later on, hopefully today, I wish we will see that where the doctrine of constructive notice should be understood. Only then you will understand indoor management. So this is constructive notice. What is that? Any document filed in the MCA portal is a public document under section 399. Once it is filed under section 3, under, under with the MCA, every person, third party, director, shareholder, everybody, who wants to enter into a contract or enter into a relationship with the company is presumed to have the knowledge of the conditions contained therein. Okay? Deeming provision, legal fiction. Got it? Uh, so now we come to memorandum. So I will, uh, yeah. If you go to the MCA website, you give the incorporation number, and you get the, or even name of the company, if you know, you go there, if you search, all the documents will be available. I think they charge you a nominal fee. You have to first register on the MCA website, then download. We do that regularly for many of our clients. All the documents are there. Everything you can download. MGT 14. Everything is public document. Annual return, public document. Except for private company, profit loss account alone can be concealed. They will, they will file it, but it won't be available for you to see. Because you should not know their margin and all. Other than that, everything download. You can see they're standing naked in front of you. Once you, this is why many firms, they hate to become company. They will say, sir, our secrets will be known like that. So what is that? Then you cannot access funds. See, the, the downside is if you want to have independence, then you won't get funds to expand. If you want to have expansion, then you have to give up a little bit of your independence. Fantastic. So I will now uh, oblige the request of Mr. Sarana Karthik Shah. And I will uh, uh, sort of uh, give a break. Surf five minutes, only five minutes. After that, you have to come back. Okay. Sir, break, sir.
welcome back from your well deserved break moving on to memorandum now from now on we are going to talk about memorandum and articles what they are later on we'll be seeing possibly to next class we should complete it alteration of memorandum and articles etc now the memorandum means the memorandum of association this is the definition given in two subsection 56 memorandum means the memorandum of association of a company as originally framed or as altered from time to time in pursuance of any previous company law or of this act as usual definition of companies act will not throw any light by reading the definition we will not understand what it is simply they will give so now let us see what is a memorandum memorandum is the base document it is the charter for the formation of the company along with the articles of association it is regarded as the constitution of the company okay how did india okay hamara bharat how did it come into existence okay on a particular day the constitution of india was adopted by the parliament of india and on that day india became a sovereign democratic republic for the people of the people by the people of this country we came into existence as a country that is why the constitution of india is such a important document similarly the memorandum together with the articles is the constitution it it is that document which brings it the company into existence it is the charter means we use the word charter here in a very very casual way normally charter means a, a, an order given by the king in england or in denmark and all where there is a king okay in india no king okay no king after the last emperor of india was bahadur shah zafar after bahadur shah nobody was the king no king the, we should thank the british for that it was the british who removed all the kings and they made it in a way they paved the way for democracy that people can rule themselves okay so the memorandum is the charter though its charter or constitution or base document that brings the company into existence right that is why it is very very important document it defines the scope later on we'll be seeing the objects of the which are there in the memorandum will finally decide what is the scope up to which the company can go beyond which it cannot go that is decided by the memorandum so the memorandum is a very very important document so hail shake i cannot speak hindi i can only speak english how you are going to understand i don't know okay i have told many many times hmm? please don't waste my time your time everybody's time asking why not explain in hindi if you have a doubt if you have an issue with language please send a mail to the board of studies clearly asking why faculty will not speak in hindi if they say speak in hindi i will immediately speak in hindi okay i think i have answered this enough and more hmm? please student i have with folded arms i am humbly praying begging students kindly don't request me to speak in hindi not because i don't want to speak in hindi but because my appointment letter by the board of studies very clearly says should not speak in any language other than english okay so if you have any issue it is with the board of studies kindly send a mail to the chairman board of studies who if he instructs me to speak in english definitely in hindi maybe i will stop teaching because i can't speak in hindi you know what you say hey chalo hey chalo sohel come on enough is enough don't waste time listen or else bye okay i will i am speaking in asan english i am speaking in english that everybody can understand i am doing my best to use simple language simple english please take that extra effort to listen to me in english learn new words in english if you don't understand a word that i am using note it down look it up in the dictionary slowly your knowledge of english will improve okay this is my answer why not speak explain in hindi because i want you to improve your english okay i want you i want sohel sheik ji to improve his knowledge of one more new language which is called english which is very important for him 
once he becomes a member of our institute, there will be an expectation by large corporates and your future employer from whom you, you are doing CA because you want to earn money. If you want to join large companies uh, other than government company, other than public sector, even in public sector, government company, once you reach a certain level of, you know, height of, you go there, like GM, CGM, then you will need to speak fluently in English. Therefore, kindly learn English. Do not expect everybody to speak in Hindi. Okay? Is that okay? Good. Similarly, when I come to North, na, I speak in one Ganda Hindi. Ganda. That Hindi, if I speak, you will get angry. With whom I speak? When I come to North, I have to speak to the servant and lower class people. Na. To them, I speak in Hindi. Means, Aage chalo, pi, pi chich, ruk, yaha ruk. Like that. Very, very simple English eyes. So, uh, my humble request is uh, uh, learn English. Huh? It is okay, Mr. Thakar. This is happening every session. Ma. When, a, when a man like me comes and speaks in English, invariably people will ask, uh, um, ask, speak in Hindi, speak in Hindi. Every time, first three sessions, I have to beg people, please don't. And as a, I'm no 57 years old man. You are all young people. Please don't argue with your teacher. When I am saying English is important, please accept it and try to learn a new language. Angrezi Sikana, please. Why don't you learn English? It is also important. Because you came through direct entry route, uh, people should speak with you in Hindi. Like that, you show in the institute uh, rules, I will follow, sir. Anywhere, if it says those who come by direct entry route need not know English, we have to entertain them only in Hindi. I have not seen like that, sir. Our institute does not have such a policy, sir. Okay? Please. Don't. So, Helji. Fold the arms. Be a human being. Okay. Learn English. Okay. Please. Learn English. Huh? Please. It's good for you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ajay Chauhan. <laughs> okay. you, 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 you can hit any number of shots at me. I don't know how many people have seen John Wick. Okay. How many ever bullets are shot at me? I am like John Wick. I will escape and I will run away. Okay. Don't worry. I am wearing bulletproof. You hit me. Keep on shooting at me. Nothing will happen to me. Hindi, Hindi, Hindi. How many times Hindi? Please. Humble. I am making humble request to all of you. Please stop this wasting time. Hindi, Hindi. If you don't understand Srikant's English, it is my loss. Bye. I am losing one student because he's not. I am not able to speak in Hindi. I am losing one good student called Sohel Sheikh. Sorry, Mr. Sohel Sheikh. Bye. Or if you want to continue, listen. May English me bolenge? You speak. You listen in English only. You will learn. Okay. Choice is yours, not mine. Chalo. Now, these are the formats of the memorandum and articles of association. Now, as you know, there are different types of companies. Right? There are different types of companies. So, for each type of company, there is a different format of memorandum. So, what are the types of companies? Based on liability, we saw company limited by shares. Company limited by guarantee. Not having share capital. Now, somebody was asking, what is company limited by guarantee? Hmm? Uh, so, um, the, the memorandum, see, what is a company limited by guarantee? There are certain cases where a company may not need money to start. To start. It may need only money at the, later on. So, at the time of starting, there may not be needing any money. But still, at the time of winding up, there may be some liability, some debts, some credit are. To pay them, there might be money needed. For, so, at the time of starting, the founders, the owners of the business will say, the starting people will say, at the time of winding up, if any money is needed, I will pay 1 lakh like that. Or he will pay, I will, we will say, I will pay 50. This is called guarantee. So, the liability of those people is limited to the guarantee given by them. To the guarantee what? The amount that they have agreed to pay at the time of winding up. Whereas if it is limited by shares, then 
the liability of the member is limited to the amount unpaid, which is still not paid on the share. So this will apply only to partly paid shares. We already saw this. So obviously, these type of companies now have different need for a different structure. So company limited by share, table A. Company limited by guarantee and not having share capital, table B. Believe me, all the other parts of the memorandum will be the same, except the subscription class. The subscription class, which we will see, will be different for different categories. Similarly, memorandum of association of a company limited by guarantee and having share capital, meaning some people have given guarantee and formed the company. After that, they are also going to go for shares. Table C. Usually, limited by guarantee means it will be usually for non-profit organization. Only not for profit company. Na, usually, they will go for guarantee. Otherwise, there. But sometimes even commercial company may go for guarantee. Depends on the need. Depends on the need of the audience. Memorandum of association of an unlimited company. A company, unlimited company and not having share capital. Unlimited company, rare. Very few companies are there. Nobody will form unlimited company. Nobody will form unlimited company. Why they will form? If they want to have unlimited company, they can as well become partnership now. This unlimited company is there only because it was there in the past. So in the old law. So they are continuing in the new law because a few unlimited companies are there. For that only they are keeping. So don't we do not waste our time asking about unlimited company. Uh, not important from exam point of view. But limited com company limited by guarantee and not having share capital. Table B. Like that you remember the tables and this. They might ask you an MCQ question wherein they will say the memorandum of association or the memorandum of association of a company limited by guarantee and having share capital will be in the format given in table A, B, C, D like that. So remember company limited by guarantee and having share capital is table C. Okay, try to remember that. Similarly, finally, unlimited company having share capital, the format is table E. Like this, you will have five other format for articles also. Similarly, you have for articles also. We will see that when you come to article. Now, the memorandum has uh, totally eight clauses. Normally, memorandum has seven clauses. One person company will have one eighth clause for nominee. Hmm? So, normally, memorandum having seven, seven clauses. First clause is the name clause, num, the name of the company with the last word limited in the case of public limited company. And uh, uh, or the last words, private limited in the case of private limited. Please note, one person company is basically a private company. So you will have, um, for example, Srikant, one person company, private limited. I don't have a one person company. I will never have one person company. I'm having three private limited companies where I'm not a shareholder. My wife and sister-in-law are shareholders. Okay, I'm, I'll be showing you one of those companies. In the next class, I will show you. When I come to alteration, I will show you the documents of one of the company where I have changed the name. One of my consulting company, I have changed the name. I will show you that document. It is not some secret document. It is a public document. It is available on MCA website. I am only going to show it to you. It is not secret. Nothing secret. Okay. Chalo. The state in which the registered office of the company is to be situated. Please note, domicile or situation clause will not give the address of the registered office. That will be given later on in a different form within 30 days. The actual address will be given in a different form in within 30 days. Here, we are only mentioning the name of the state in which the registered office of the company is situated. You might ask me, is this very important? Yes. In, in See, okay, this takes me into deep politics, but not politics, into political science. Please examine the Constitution of India. The very first article, the very first article of the Constitution of India says, India is a union of states. India is a union of states, which means we have two powers. Later on, this will become relevant to you. The central government also has power. State government also has power. So, I am. everybody has two identities. 
<laughs> whether we like or not okay we have two identities i am an indian i am a tamilian every one of you can say your name and your you can say i am an indian then you can say which our state you are from so every one of us has a state identity whether we like it or not okay even though shahrukh khan you know very beautifully in that movie um, chak de india chak de na chak de india beautiful movie i enjoyed that movie where you know they will keep on saying i am so and so andhra pradesh i am so and so bihar like that so and so tamil nadu no say you are so and so india that is meant when they are going to play against the whole world but within india we are different we have different different state so the company has to be identified with one state that is called domicile or situation why because as i am again and again telling you under the constitution there are two sets of laws the central law like company law income tax act now gst these are all central law also we have state law we have in maharashtra we have the stamp act in tamil nadu we have stamp act that is not applicable in gujarat that is applicable only in maharashtra so if your your domicile will decide which law will apply to you sometimes the domicile of the company will decide sometimes the location of the transaction will also decide eh? but is still that state in which the registered office of the company is to be situated think about it when you go to gst they will ask you where is your registered office so that state ka gst law only will apply to you for the main registration then you are setting up a branch in karnataka then that will be a branch for this so your core your main place would be still wherever you are maharashtra means maharashtra so you will have to mention the state the registered office of the company will be situated in the state of bihar madhya pradesh whichever thereafter you will have to give the actual address in indore or pune or wherever nagpur that will be given within 30 days the actual address the post of address okay then you have the objects clause which is the object for which the company uh, the company is proposed to be incorporated these are known as main objects and the matters which are necessary for furtherance of the main objects okay now rito banerji is asking a very good question sir inc 33 are all these forms or not actually that inc 33 is a number once you go to the spice form na spice form there you will select they will ask you which table will apply to you there they will ask you so if you select company limited by share then that format will come in inc 33 are you able to understand that inc 33 form is a very peculiar form it is an e form so you will first have to it is a it is filled online first you will have to select what company you are forming based on that the correct table will come and fall okay you try it only if you do it online you will understand but it's a good question rito ji where you are asking what form all the forms are there in inc 33 based on your selection only the content will come and fall exact content will come and fall okay it, it is very very beautiful you can do that online okay ha ah, when we come to registered office na in detail i will tell you rahul ji whether uh, um, registered office may be different one thing i'll tell you registered office means that address given to the registrar for the purpose of this act under this act whatever address is given by you is called registered office other than that you can have head office you can have corporate office you can have administrative office all those addresses are also there but for legal purposes suppose i want to serve a notice legal notice on this company i have to serve it only on the registered office so you, you may call one office as head office but that may not be the registered office kyun because while filing the form with the uh, mca you might have given your office as indore there are many companies having head office in mumbai but the registered office will still be in there are a lot of companies like that hmm? it can be so state capital may it may be there so even within madhya pradesh your registered office may be in bhavra or mandu but your uh, corporate office may be in indore like that so 
that is quite possible so it need not be the same so don't confuse registered office you use the term it is a legal term what does it mean that address which is given in the nca website which you have uploaded as registered office if i want to serve a legal notice on you i have to serve it only on that registered office card address you might have 100 corporate office blah blah that corporate office could also be your registered office that is not the point but you can't say all communication to be sent only to corporate office no legal matter has to go only to registered office okay this is just remember that hmm? also now object class which is said objects means what is it that the company is going to do after incorporation? What is the activity in which the company will be engaged after incorporation? When I was born, when I was born, my father and mother did not file any form saying these are the objects for which Srikanth is born for becoming a chartered accountant, for becoming a teacher, for doing this, that and all. Because they don't know what this donkey will do. They don't know. My, my father till I was in 10th standard thought I am only fit for grazing buffalo. My father honestly believed uh, I am only fit for grazing buffalo. Ben, only fit for that. Okay. So nobody can know what, what is the potential of a human being. But company is different. At the time of birth itself you have to tell what is it that this fellow will be engaged in on incorporation. And the two main objects, meaning only three or five you can't have anything and everything under the sun. No. See, for example, when I was born, my father must have thought that this boy will become chartered accountant because he is also C. But I also went on to become trainer, corporate trainer, coach, which was not part of my original main objects. So human being can keep on changing what they want to do. But uh, company is restricted to the objects stated in the memorandum main objects. So if you say company will be engaged in uh, trading, buying and selling, manufacturing or otherwise dealing in steel and steel products, then the main object of the company is steel. Manufacturing only with the steel. Because the main objects very clearly, sometimes we may not use the word steel, we will say ferrous and non-ferrous metals of every kind like that, slightly we will increase it. So by thereby ferrous and non-ferrous metals, we will say slightly I can get into met metals. Like I can move from steel, I can move this way, that way. Okay. Maybe aluminium, like that, brass, huh? like this way, that way I can go. But still I am within the metal framework. I cannot go beyond that. Okay. So, good. Now, yeah, Surahindran says, Grazing Buffalo is a famous dialogue of all TN parents. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Chalo. Then fourth class is called the liability class. We already saw na, whether that company will be limited by shares or guarantee with share capital, without share capital, unlimited, etc. That will be stated in this class. Now you will understand this table A, table, table B, C, D, E, only this part of it will change. Limited by shares or whatever. Okay. So this is the liability class. So we already know what is company limited by shares, company limited by guarantee. Let us not waste our time. Hmm? Then. So. Capital clause. This is the clause that will mention clearly what will be the capital of the company. This is the authorized capital. Nominal capital. This is the amount of share capital with which the company is to be registered. It will also mention how it is divided. Whether you see, we will be later on when you come to share capital and debenture. I will tell you that there are two types of capital. You have uh, equity and preference. You already know that from your BCom or from your Plus Two or CPT, whatever you would have been told that there are two types of capital: equity and preference. So all that will be mentioned here. The capital of the company shall consist of 5 lakh equity shares of rupees 10 each or the capital of the company shall consist of rupees 50 lakhs consisting of 5 lakh equity shares of rupees 10 each uh, and 10 lakh preference shares of rupees 100 each. 10 crores. Okay. 10 lakh preference shares of rupees 100 each. So together. 
So be the this If you want to increase it, suppose I want to allot more shares than, suppose I, I have 5 lakh authorized capital, 5 lakh shares. Now I want to allot uh, for 6 lakh shares. Then I have to increase the authorized capital. Then only I can allot. Okay. So th this gives the limitation. Okay. Of the uh, thing. And uh, capital clause. Okay. So uh, any provision in the memorandum or articles in the case of a company limited by guarantee and not having share capital shall not give any person a right to participate I'm sorry, in the uh, divisible profits of the company otherwise than as a member. See, I will explain. Company limited by guarantee not having share capital. Now, company limited by guarantee not having share capital how they will share the profit if it is limited by shares then they will declare dividend based on the nominal value of the share suppose i am having 1000 shares in reliance one share of reliance is 10 rupees then nominal value is 10000 if reliance says 10% i will get 1000 rupees you understand now whatever they or they might say uh, 10 rupees per share they might say uh, 100 rupees per share, which means for every one 10 rupees share, I'll get 100 rupees. So if I have 1000 shares, I'll get 1 lakh, like that. Okay. Now the point is, it is linked to the nominal value of the share. But this is a company not having share capital. How will they share the profit? They will have some shares. So they will say A will have 10 shares, 10%, B will have 20% share like that. Now, so that participation in the profits, divisible profits, can be done only with a member. You cannot give a share of profit to a non-member. This is what it means. If the contrary is done, that is if you give share of profit to a non-member, that acting is wide, which means that money has to be compensated by the directors or by that person has to repay. This is the meaning of this class. This is the meaning of this concept in capital clause. Okay. So that means non-members are not entitled to dividend or any other participation in the divisible profits of a company by guarantee and not having share capital. That's what it means. Can the authorized capital be altered? Bilkul. Definitely it can be done. For that, the procedure I will tell you later when you come, you can increase the, when you come to share capital and debentures, you will see. Basically, simple. You have to amend the memorandum by passing special resolution. That's all. Change. You increase it. We do it every day. Minimum, I do that five, five times in a year for my clients because they invariably want to increase the share capital. They want to capitalize reserve. Bank will tell you are having general reserve so much, p and account so much. Push it to share capital. They will push it. For that, I have to increase the authorized capital. For that, what I will do? I have to change the memorandum. That is called alteration of memorandum. We will see that in the next class. Hopefully, a little bit I am going behind schedule. It is okay. Let us see. Hmm? Finally, we have association or subscription class. Though this is called a class, meaning section like that, it is not a separate class. This is the contractual part of the memorandum. See, when you, next time, you know, if you are having any lease agreement with your landlord or if you are a landlord with your tenant, see that agreement. There you will find this instrument therefore witnesseth as follows. That is called contractual part. In that the first will be the landlord hereby agrees to, uh, the landlord hereby gives the uh, property on lease to the tenant. This is called contractual part. This is the contract. Now, the memorandum is a contract between the signatories and the company. The minute the company is incorporated, that contract becomes valid between the members and the company and the companies and members amongst themselves. Okay. That contracting part is called, uh, so there you will find in the memorandum, I will show it to you also. We the several persons, we the several persons whose names are mentioned below and who have agreed to take the shares as mentioned against our names. In case of share capital, hereby agree to be associated as a company with limited liability. That is the contractor. That is the contract. That will be coming in the subscription part. 
Once the subscribers sign the memorandum and the ROC issues a certificate of incorporation, there is a binding contract between each member and the company and the members inter se. Inter se is a Latin word. Inter se is a Latin word meaning amongst themselves. Among themselves. Inter se. Okay. Now, subscription class. In the case of 1% company, in the subscription class, there will be two. That is, the sixth for OPC, it will become seven and eight. That is, seventh, the OPC, the 1% will mention very clearly. Okay. Normally, there are only six months. For normal company, only six. With six, it will be over. But OPC, it will be seven and eight. That is, I whose name and address is given below. I am desirous of forming a company. In the normal company, with the two or seven, what they will say? We, the several person whose name and address is given below, are desirous of forming a company. Here, this one gentleman alone is saying, I, whose name and address is given below, am desirous of forming a company in pursuance of the memorandum of association and agree to take all the shares in the company, capital of the company. There they will say, agree to take the shares mentioned against our name. Slight difference. Okay. So, this is for OPC. Similarly, for OPC, there will be one more thing. What is that? That memorandum should mention the name of the nominee in the event of death of this old member. So, they have created eight classes. How? Normal association class for other than OPC, six. Seven is for OPC. Eight is nominee for OPC. Like that, eight classes are there. Okay? So, Sri Srimati, whoever, son of so-and-so, resident of so-and-so, age so-and-so, shall be the nominee. In the event of the soul. You have to mention that person's name in the memorandum. Later on, if the nominee is being changed, if the nominee is withdrawing, etc., there will be no change in the memorandum. You will simply file INC3 and that's the end of it. It will be noted in the ROC's record. You need not amend the memorandum. For changing the nominee or nominee becoming a member, there is no change in the memorandum. No need to alter the memorandum. We saw that in OPC. Uh, MOA section 4. Yeah, all this, what I am now telling is coming under section 4. Correct. Section 4. We will be seeing that. Section 4. Agreed. Section, section 4 deals with memorandum. You are absolutely correct. Okay. Now, I, I was also planning to take you through the various classes and then articles and all, then doctrines, but it looks like today there is no time. Only one request going forward from next class onwards. Those of you who are not comfortable with the only English class, please take a call. If you can come, please come. I will teach in English. But do not in the middle of the class, please put teach in Hindi. Because of that, we are wasting 15 minutes every day. Please have some human consideration for other students who can understand English and who are willing to listen to me without speaking in Hindi. So in with respect to those students, please, please avoid putting this request for teaching in Hindi. If you still put it from next class onwards, I will be like Gandhi ji ka monkey. Close my eye, close my ear. I can't close my mouth, but I will definitely close my mouth and ear, eyes and ear. I will not see what you are writing. I will ignore your comment. Whatever you put, if you say you are not patriotic, you are not, yeah, you are an idiot, you put anything, I will simply like Gandhi ji ka monkey, I will put like this and go. Except mouth will talk because I am coming to teach you. Hmm? Have respect for your teacher. From now on, please do not request me and embarrass me to teach in Hindi. Is that agreement? If you cannot understand my English, I am very sorry, but that's it. No more. I will not apologize anymore to people who are not willing to learn a new language. I don't have to apologize for not knowing Hindi. Okay? When you are not having any worry about not knowing English. What do you say? So this is the end of this discussion on language. Please. Okay? Stop. No more language issues. We have Mr. Kulwant Singh, Rajendra Singh Kulwant. I am unable to attend live classes, so I take all your recorded uh, lectures and I am Thank for such an amazing teaching, sir. You are one of my God. No, no, please. Allah hai Malik. Sabko Malik Allah hai. 
<laughs> you will clear that much as guru i will tell you you will clear okay that i will assure you you will clear okay don't worry pulvanji don't worry you will clear chalo um, uh, uh, company limited by guarantee not having does the member gets dividend on the basis of any... exactly not agreement in the uh, uh, what is that uh, subscription clause na instead of having shares you will mention the sharing ratio in that ratio they will share the profits of the company okay so that is uh thank you thank you very much for supportive words given by mr parthrana nega uh, harge ji and no problem okay now uh, since we have a little time i will continue till however i can then i will stop so now we are going to take up each class we are going to take up each class and go in detail so first name class so the name stated in the memorandum shall not be identical with or resemble too nearly the name to the name of an existing company registered under this act so meaning if there is for example there is already a company well known company called reliance industries limited now if you are going to want to incorporate a company with reliance industries limited identical no are you able to understand no for example blue dot b l u e d o t blue dot corporate solutions private limited already incorporated my company one of my consulting companies okay now if you want blue dot b l u e d o t consulting Solu corporate solutions private limited you will not get identical now you might say i will not have identical i will have a name like this reliance enterprises limited sorry the word reliance is resembling and enterprises is vague so chances are you may not get it it is too nearly the name of an existing company why they are doing this because they don't want any confusion between two companies suppose i am able to form another company with reliance enterprises limited people will think in some way it is related to that reliance and they might have a different idea about my credit worthiness and size so i can commit fraud to prevent it they say you cannot incorporate a company with a name which is identical means exactly same no or resemble meaning looking same see twins especially zygotic twins meaning uh, who have come from the same uh, see there is only one egg which divides and two sperms have gone and thing so zygotic same egg okay they divide they identical twins we call them whereas non zygotic that is they are two different eggs or two different sperm but born together in the same mother womb at the same time they are born or one before the other they are twins but not identical twins whereas uh, two eggs or two sperms there is a single egg single sperm divide to two it becomes identical twins and uh, maybe my biology is wrong don't correct me if i am wrong but essentially identical twins will be exactly the same you cannot say the difference between them even the dna will be the same whereas uh, resemble meaning they look alike very easy to confuse with them like that hmm? so that is also not allowed right also we cannot incorporate a company uh, which will be we cannot have a, a company which will have a name which is it's an offense under any law okay maybe there are some law which says you cannot have this name like that or it is undesirable okay in that case what is an undesirable name okay central government has prescribed rules okay uh, certain names for example bharat central national these words are given in your board of studies committee material later on when you are free please go through but no need to mug up all those names please no need to mug up all those words no my institute will not expect you to know them by heart just to know that words like central bharat uh, or any state name tamil nadu maharashtra whatever which will give you some impression that that company is connected with or having the patronage or support of the central government or state government or local authority corporation so if that impression is given then no but suppose you are forming a company with the permission of the central government national institute of 
community health. No problem. Because maybe central government is interested in forming such a body. Then they will give specific permission, approval. So with that approval, you go to the ROC and say, hey, central government has approved this name, National Institute of Community Health or Indian Institute of Community Health. So they have allowed. Then you can do it. So unless central government permits it, it is undesirable. So certain names can be used only with the approval of the central government. That is given in Rule 8B. Rule 8B. Rule 8A gives certain names that are undesirable where you should not use it. For example, terrorist limited. No, you cannot use. Okay. Like that or not. The, the idea is it gives a wrong impression. Hmm? Corruption limited. You can't have. Okay. That is undesirable. Now, Rule 8. It, rule 8 is elaborately reproduced in the Board of Studies material. Rule 8 is reproduced in the institute material. I am not covering it already. Time is not there. No. Please go through it. It gives examples when a company would be considered as resembling one another. Many examples are given. Plural, singular. For example, so like that, many examples are given. Okay. Go through that. Again, from the end exam point of view, no need to mug up everything. Just to know Rule 8 gives examples. Hmm? Just to go through it. Also, the registrar of companies have been told that names should not be in contravention of the emblems and names, prevention of improper use act. That is also there. Okay. Like Bharat and all that. No need to know it fully. Hmm? No. So today I will stop here with this because it's now 5 8 32. Uh, I will Pavanji next time onwards. Sometimes, you know, when I when I am becoming involved in the topic, I will tend to speak fast. This is my bad habit. I apologize. Next time, I will. I am doing my best to slow down because of which I am unable to cover the topic also. If necessary, I will take one more class, but I will go very slow. Hmm? One more thing. Other ratio is not mentioned, then it is equal. Madam, in the subscription, cl in the, uh, subscription class, na, you have to mention. You cannot, in company ka thing, na, there is no question of not mentioning. If you don't mention, the company will not be incorporated. Okay, so this option may not be possible. Okay, so that is what. If you corporate a company with name of Real, Real Alliance, you check up Real Alliance. See, they might object to you. They might say it. It's so, see when you where, like Pavan says. No, if I am speaking very fast, Real Alliance, Real Alliance, like that, it becomes a uh, thing. Right? Confused now. That's a call of the registrar. Each registrar has the power to decide. So, to my knowledge, Real Alliance is not the same as Reliance. It is not resembling, but uh, I can't blindly say it is not because some stupid fellow in the MCA may say it is there. Then you have to write like that. Hmm? But one thing is, there is a company called Alliance. <laughs> there is a company called Alliance. So that company may object because Alliance is an existing company ka naam. Okay. That's like building industries. So real Alliance again has Alliance in it. So that they might object. Check out. So your attack may not come from Reliance. It may come from some other company. Usually what we do before we reserve the name, na, we go to the ROC ka, MCA ka site and we search for the name. We see what are all the company with that name. We see whether any company is coming near our name. Then we prepare our strategy for explaining why our name is different from that name. It's a, it's a fun activity. Every time a new company comes, we ask what, what name, what name. Then we decide how to do it. Every, every name is a story. If I start telling, there is no time for completing the syllabus. Today also, my target was to go right up to doctrines. Okay. Thanks to the Hindi dispute. Uh, thing right from Karnanidhi and uh, Periyar, we are fighting for our language. I say. How long we will fight, I don't know. Anyway, so uh, Maggap, I don't understand. Sir, Maggap means, please elaborate, Mr. Chauhan. Make it a little more elaborate, I will reply to you. I will, Pavanji, I will definitely go slow. Uh, uh, I am a direct entry student, but I did not answer to some question how to improve. Um, see, you continue to listen to me when I am speaking in English. Na? Continue to expose yourself to the new language. And uh, some of you are thinking direct entry means it is a, some sort of a reservation category. I don't think so. If you are direct entry, you want to do CA, then you, ma, that, that subject is tough, ma. 
So you have to learn more. You understand? Huh? My humble request, read more books. Uh, read a little more. Hmm? Okay, like that. Read some good uh, English newspaper, like business line. Hmm? Slowly improve. That's the only way. Communication skill, you have to improve it, please. Huh? You are in, and communication means English only, not in Hindi or Tamil or Malayalam. In English, try to improve. Hmm? My humble request. Start now, please. May I agree. See, because you are a direct entry student, I don't understand. What has happened? Nothing has happened. Your BCom completed. Means your knowledge should be more. Hmm? So, uh, hello. Okay. Thank you very much. Huh? So and so. I don't know. So and so means so and so. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Parthiji. And uh, some brand. Yeah, we will take up more about it, about this brand name and all that. In detail, I will teach when we come to rectification of name. There it will be more relevant. Okay. Uh, so today, Ashto class is over. Thank you very much. I complete this class with a lot of joy and a humble request to my good students who cannot understand English, only Hindi. Kindly try to understand my English. Kindly stop putting in next class onwards. I don't want any student to put, please, you can also teach in Hindi like that. Please do not put. Folded arms of the teacher, you please see. Stop. Brooke. Okay. Thank you. Right. Sir, class over, sir.